everything you've heard at this church since our founding in 2013, all of the aggressive interventions, including intermittent fasting, metformin, sirtuin activation, plasma exchange, senolytic drugs, all those concepts that were in this article. And I want to compliment prevention for coming up to speed, for joining our current era where people are intervening to slow down aging and even reverse it. So we're, we're getting more and more mainstream publications recognizing aging is something that we can deal with now. So what is the key to super longevity that we may be able to utilize in the near future? This is a little bit of a science lesson, but I want everyone to understand. Transcription factors. They act like a light switch. They turn genes on, turn genes off, and when we're young, wow, they're all working in perfect harmony. But when we get older, unfortunately, they go out of whack. So a transcription factor are proteins that turn on and off specific genes. Uh, activating transcription factors will turn on gene expression, and the ones that uh, suppress it, uh, those uh, are ones that we want to be able to control so that we can enable at some point when we perfect the ability of transcription factors to tightly regulate our gene expression, literally enable our old cells to be reprogrammed back into embryonic cells capable of de developing into all tissues of the body. So this is the Nobel Prize 2012. Uh, researchers uh, identified transcription factors, four of them, that were enabled to take old cells and convert them back into pluripotent stem cells called Yamanaka factors. And this motivated us to look into the research. A number of prestigious journals have written about how simple it is. This deals with hematopoietic stem cells. And they were able to use Yamanaka factors to transform them back into uh, early stage cells and then differentiate them back into healthy hematopoietic cells. Hematopoietic cells, by the way, are what builds most of your immune system, your red blood cell production, your platelet production. When your bone marrow gives out, meaning your hematopoietic stem cell and mesenchymal stem cell niche is worn out, you die. You cannot sustain your life when you have these problems. This is another diagram to show how simple it is to use Yamanaka transcription factors to reverse aging, to take old cells, transform them back into young cells. So Scientific American uh, published an article in 2016 about the age reversal benefits that were being seen in the laboratory, mainly cells, parabiosis research, in which old animals seem to be partially growing younger. And well, that's good that they did that, but I was growing impatient. I mean, time was moving, I was getting older, and this research was not advancing as fast as it should have. So what I did is commissioned a study uh, of a review of all of the published literature about transcription factors being used to reverse aging. And by getting this published in a respected journal, it lets scientists around the world read this and realize that we may have the technology available right now to meaningfully induce age reversal in people. And what we proposed in this article was using a six-factor transcription factor cocktail, uh, the four Yamanaka factors plus two additional ones to induce systemic age reversal. And this is the game plan. And we are going to be starting doing this as soon as next month. This is how uh, much of a, a hurry we are to make this happen. But you take an older person and you simply do a skin punch test to remove their fibroblast, uh, remove those, put them into a Petri dish, and then introduce those four Yamanaka factors plus two additional ones. And what you get are autologous induced pluripotent stem cells. Autologous meaning they're the same DNA as the person that they were removed from. That's very important because you don't want someone else's stem cells being put into your body. That could cause that graft versus host reaction, which can be a real bad problem. So you take these induced pluripotent stem cells, dif differentiate them into tissue specific progenitor cells. Those can then be put back into the same person who donated them, put back into their body for the purpose of systemic age reversal. This is a project that some very aggressive scientists are pursuing right now. This research is going on right now with people perhaps, and definitely with animals, 
to reverse aging. If this works, by the way, we're all going to live a lot longer because we're going to regenerate our bone marrow. So blood is something that is produced essentially in our bone marrow, blood cells, and it, People don't realize how active our bone marrow is. I mean, a thousand billion blood cells are produced every single day. And when we, our bone marrow gets too old, well, we just don't, or we're not able to sustain life. And as it relates to the current situation, our immune systems, older people suffer immune senescence. That's due mainly to bone marrow failure, thymic atrophy, a few different factors. But this brilliant scientist was able to do something unprecedented in 2017. He was able to take old uh, cells, old hematopoietic cells, and transform them, reprogram those cells back into young, healthy hematopoietic stem cells, put them back into living mice, and showed fantastic regenerative effects. He's now doing a lot of leukemia research. We are petitioning him to get back into the age reversal arena because while leukemia and other hematological malignancies kill a lot of people, aging is going to kill us all. So we're hoping this brilliant researcher will get back into the business of figuring out how to make us all young by rewriting the rules of biology. And by our mind, 2006, cell reprogramming was first demonstrated. In 2011, they took cells from a 100-year-old person and they brought them back into an embryonic stage using the Yamanaka and other types of transcription factors. And the research is going on right now to figure out how we can do that in people, in vivo, in whole people. So what was considered impossible before 2006, it was proven to be doable and the rules of biology have forever changed. So last year at RADFEST, I proposed some research be done where we use some senolytics to uh, remove old bone marrow, senescent cells in our bone marrow, and then replace those with reprogrammed autologous pluripotent stem cells, and do the same thing with transcription factors to produce autologous mesenchymal stem cells for system-wide regeneration. And if this works in people, it would mean we're going to live a lot longer. We're not going to suffer the catastrophic illnesses that plague elderly individuals. And what's fantastic is, just a couple weeks ago, if you missed this, I understand there's been a lot of news media coverage about other topics. But for the first time, scientists were able to use this type of technology to reverse aging in live mice. It received a lot of coverage on the scientific uh, websites, this came out of the Salk Institute, by the way, in which they were able for the first time to induce partial age reversal using Yamanaka factors to reprogram these animals while they're still alive. They were able to induce this benefit, not just in a petri dish, in live mice. And the Salk Institute issued a, a press release. It got a lot of media coverage, as I said, but there's so much media out there. If you missed it, I understand. Reversing aging of these animals back down to a youthful state and they were able to show that their skin, uh, organs in their body were epigenetically younger using the uh, clock of DNA methylation. These animals at the cellular level were younger, they were looking younger, they were behaving younger, lower inflammation, reduced senescent cells. All of the benefits that we're looking for, they were able to achieve using cellular reprogramming Yamanaka factors. And what they found is there weren't any of the feared side effects, no malignancies, None of the toxicity concerns that people have been concerned about, and they showed that the more that they introduced the Yamanaka factors, the, the more consistently they did it, the better the results. So this study uncovered a lot of information that we didn't quite know. Now that we know it, we can take this research a step forward. We can move it forward, which is absolutely fantastic. And these are some of the ways that they were able to make this happen. And I know some of this is technical, but one of the reasons I put these technical slides up is we have scientific people who review what I'm talking about. They review my slides. And if they can see how easy it is to use just Yamanaka factors alone to reprogram cells in a living mouse and enable that mouse to reverse aging, we're hoping they'll carry that research forward, move it faster. So partial reprogramming of the most important organs in our body was accomplished in live mice. 
earth-shattering news, regrettable, it didn't make more media coverage. These are some of the researchers at the Salk Institute that made it happen. We applaud them. They're continuing to work to refine us. This is all the work that we said was going to happen back in 2013. It's happening right now before our eyes. These old animals resembled younger animals and their epigenetic clock went in reverse in the live animal, not in a test tube, not in the way that it's normally done. So, the billionaires, I've complained a lot about them because they don't always write the kind of checks they should to research. But because of the findings that keep emanating out of these laboratories, beginning of this year, a $3 billion commitment from some of the more famous younger billionaires to find a way to reverse aging. They got all this money, the only problem they have in life is aging and death. And once that problem goes away, well, we're all gonna be better off. So good news is money being put into research and as it relates to where we are in history, well, think about this. Since 1900, there's been more technology advances, <coughs> way more than the previous 8,000 years of recorded history. To think about that should let you then think about where we're gonna be in 10 years, 20 years, 20 years from now, wow we're gonna be potentially living forever. So we have to accelerate the pace of research. We have to prioritize this as the number one reason why people get up in the morning and go to work and, and self-experiment, communicate, educate your friends that history is on our side. We're making that progress right now. And for those who missed it, yeah, the entire human genome, 100% has been sequenced. A lot of people thought, by the way, in 2003, they had done it, but they had really only done 92%. That missing 8% meant a lot. And well, they now have it 100% sequenced. Look forward to lots and lots of advances in gene therapy. Wall Street Journal reported on it. All kind of media talked about the fact that we, are going, we now have sequenced the whole human genome. But what are we gonna do to stay alive long enough to benefit from it? I'm getting back and now into how we behave. And the Mediterranean diet, we've long advocated that. A study came out, a British Journal of Nutrition, showing a 25% reduced risk of death in people who follow this Mediterranean diet. And then the evidence kept building. More and more studies came out showing that you increase your risk of dying by a huge margin, 46% higher, if you eat the typical American diet, which is unhealthy, but if you follow a more Mediterranean diet, you reduce your risk of sudden death 26%. And this study came on. This is the largest study ever to evaluate the effects of diet on lifespan. And the headline of CNN said, if you change your diet, you can add 13 years to your life. But there's a little caveat to that. You have to start changing your diet at age 20 in order to get that 13 years. But I'll tell you, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do it because we analyzed this. This, this was one of the larger uh, studies uh, done. Um, if you start at age 60 eating an optimal diet, which I'm gonna describe in the next few slides. Uh, if you start at age 60, uh, a woman adds eight years to her life, but a man, he gets to add a lot more time. He gets to add 8.8 .8 years. Now, why does it work better in men and women? Well, one big reason is men tend to eat less healthy than women. So when they switch to an optimized diet, they gain more time. So at age 60, optimize your diet and you gain eight to 8.8 8 .8 years of additional life. And that eight years may mean the difference between you benefiting from these incredible advances in gene therapy or unfortunately being one of those people who just missed the boat. So the type of foods that enable people to live longer, uh, legumes, whole grains, nuts, uh, less red meat, less processed meat, they did this study so meticulously, they would tell you how many extra years you get if you eat more of the right foods as opposed to continuing to eat the, the, the wrong foods. So the components of an optimized diet, legumes, whole grains, nuts, and of course, avoiding the bad stuff. So the uh, legumes, by the way, people ask what that is. Well, this is what they are basically, beans and peas and lentils. If you put these into your regular diet, you're gonna live a lot longer. And they were able to validate that in, in a major way, in a major way. So if man, 
does not know what to do, and that's most people in this country, by the way, the way they're eating, they're, they're, they're gonna do what they shouldn't do. And what you shouldn't do is eat these foods. These are the foods that are killing Americans today. Used to be tobacco, it still is to some extent, but unfortunately, most people are consuming the wrong kind of foods and they are prematurely dying. So an optimized diet does not include this stuff. This is what you stay away from, and instead, you eat the healthy stuff. We've got an obesity epidemic right now, and what that is doing, by the way, is reversing the gains made against cardiovascular disease. We now have more people getting heart attacks, having heart attacks, because their diets are so poor. So what we're gonna be advocating continuously to remind people, eat healthy, live longer. What, you, what we're gonna to serve tonight for dinner, I'd like to think is gonna be a healthy way to eat their calories. So if we are age 20, as I said, and we follow that optimized diet, we get that huge benefit, that huge increase in lifespan. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't uh, uh, avoid that. The uh, Mediterranean diet is what we're advocating. And what, uh, if you're 80, by the way, well, you get some benefit. But I really want to emphasize for those who are 80 in this room, eating healthy will buy you more time. Very well validated. I've tried to make it as simple as I can with these slides that if we can avoid the bad stuff, and the bad stuff, by the way, on the right-hand side of that slide are the red arrows going down, the red meat, processed meat, sweetened drinks, refined grains, eggs. Those are things that cause us to die sooner. If we eat more legumes, whole grains, nuts, fish, fruit, vegetables, we live longer. And I think most of us have known that, but this study validated it in the biggest way that it's ever been done. For those who are not gonna change their diet or wanna add some extra benefit, rapamycin. It has some of the calorie restriction benefits uh, to it and a lot more. Uh, in, in studies in mice, up to a 60% increase in life expectancy brand new mechanism has been identified as to why rapamycin enhances uh, lifespan. We already know rapamycin induces healthy autophagy. It turns down excess mTOR. Those are two cellular activities that you want to have happen. In other words, more autophagy, which is cellular housekeeping, and less excess mTOR, which causes the accumulation of well, a lot of fat and a lot of malignancies, a lot of problems. But this new study showed that rapamycin reduces the errors that occur in protein synthesis. And a lot of us don't realize that our cells are constantly synthesizing new proteins. Once that machinery breaks down, we die. It's really that simple. Rapamycin reduces the errors that occur as we get older as it relates to protein synthesis. Uh, this study published talked about the 60% increase in lifespan, and even people who started early or late in life, uh, animals that started late in life, they still get about an extra seven years of equ human equivalent lifespan. It's really amazing how that, how that works. So we've got more and more people studying rapamycin. These registries are open for people who have been using rapamycin for the last four, five, six years, so w these researchers can find out how well is it really working in people. We've got this registry set up. There's a study going on right now for people who want to get their hands on rapamycin at a very reasonable price. Enroll in this study. A uh, year cost is $360. It was going to cost $1,200. And then some wealthy people said, well, we want to see these results. So they wrote some checks and they received $485,000 of funding so they could reduce the price people paid to participate from 1,200 to 360. And that includes blood tests, includes rapamycin, which is an expensive drug. That's a website that you can register if you want to participate in this study. It is a, a not-for-profit study. No one's trying to make rapamycin a drug. But what they're looking at, by the way, is visceral fat bone density, they want to see if rapamycin is going to improve people's overall state of health, and they're going to try different doses of it. And the Mayo Clinic, they're doing a study on rapamycin to treat heart failure, to see if it can improve cardiac output. This is an ongoing study, and if, if it's still taking people, you might want to contact Mayo and see if you can enroll if, if you have a cardiac problem. This very well may be a way to save your life. University of Washington, they are also doing studies on dogs and they're evaluating people to see how well rapamycin is slowing aging and maybe even reversing it. 
So a group, uh, Bold Integrity Research, this group uh, is putting money into small studies, small studies that will seek to identify what may or may not work in people. So they put up 26 million and they're gonna divvy that up in $500,000 mini grants and they're gonna make decisions in just three weeks. If someone has a concept that might reverse aging, they'll put up to $500,000 into that concept to see how quickly that research can be done to see how fast we can reverse aging in our bodies. Now for people who question whether or not this is really gonna happen in our lifetime. You travel back to 1903, and this glider with a little engine attached to it takes off, flies 120 feet, 20 feet off the ground. It makes international headline news. But nobody thought that this was ever going to evolve into anything beyond a hobby, something for people to do on a Sunday afternoon if they were bored. No one predicted that there would be flying buses. No one predicted that, but 54 years later, it happened. Uh, flying buses around the world. All the reasons why it couldn't happen were resolved and figured out, and planes right now, of course, flying all around the world. We've got a rover on Mars, traveling around Mars, being controlled from the Earth, and this was out of the Wall Street Journal. They were talking about this flying helicopter that's also on Mars, being controlled from Earth, and saying, well, gee, in 1903, they took a plane 120 feet on a beach, now we've got something on Mars. So if you extrapolate that, if you extrapolate that via just the cellular re reprogramming that we're talking about, extrapolate that in a way. So 1903, the first flying machine, flies 120 feet. 2021, a robot and helicopter are sent to Mars, 140 million miles. That's a, that's a big difference in just 118 years. Well, in 2011, they took cells from a 100-year-old person and they fully regenerated those cells using those Yamanaka factors. 2022, as I just announced, they were able to use Yamanaka factors to reprogram cells in a live mouse, live mice, and reverse their aging process. Where are we gonna be in the next 10 years? We all could be younger. We could theoretically be younger. It's been proven to work in a live animal for the first time. That occurred just basically a month and a half ago. This was announced. Aging being put in reverse, prestigious institute doing it. And we talk about the common task of humanity, why this church was founded. Well, I want to change that word task because uh, the, the Nikolai Fedorov, he was a Russian, and uh, some of the Russian terminology is different. So what I want to change that to is common duty of humanity. And that's a duty that we all have. Every one of us should feel the duty to educate our friends, enlighten them as to what they can do to live longer, what they can do to help support research that could accelerate the development of technologies that puts us in that position. So I just changed that slide to change it from common task to it being our duty. It is our duty to investigate information, uh, self-experiment, report what we're doing to others, and work as a group, work as a community to extend our healthy human lifespan. So the media continues to give the concept of age reversal very favorable coverage. This was a, a CBS News report, November 2021. But they're talking about the fact that something that most people considered impossible is occurring today in the laboratory model. And I believe it's occurring right now in people who are self-experimenting with the right technologies. And um, unfortunately, there are people with a lot of money who, I'd like to say, misplace the priorities. They often donate to a lot of charities, it's nice, but they don't donate to the kind of charities that can enable them to stay alive. I don't know what I would do if I ever had $6 billion, but you can imagine it would be some very interesting work. <laughs> because I, 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 I'm not of that category, unfortunately. But I can't imagine having $6 billion and, and aging and not doing something rather radical with that money, uh, be it funding 100 different scientists who each one may have a concept, let them prove that concept or disprove it. But the idea of dying with this kind of money just seems imp improbable. And yet the younger billionaires, they are putting the big money in. Jeff Bezos, Peter Thiel, Pretty much all of them are engaged in some sort of funding for aging research. They realize they got everything in the world except indefinite life. 
And since they've accomplished the impossible in their businesses, they're, they're seeking to do that. So big money is being put into aging research, but I just don't trust it. I trust what I'm doing a little bit more because I've been doing this, frankly, my whole life. I've been inter interacting with scientists since the 1970s as it relates to aging. And, and these individuals, well, they're writing big checks, but they're not actively engaged. But they are hiring some very smart people, and I compliment them for that. They, by the way, have hired um, uh, Mr. Y Yamanaka, Dr. Yamanaka, uh, Steve Horvath, who developed the uh, Horvath clock to measure epigenetic age. So they have hired the right people. So in that regard, I'm very grateful. And the idea is to let you know that aging has been reversed in live mice. That should have, that would have been a headline news story if it was not for the war and other issues. So uh, we at least understand that's happening. And the fact that the scientific com community knows it's happening means look forward to more advances. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that people have in the audience.